Oh yeah, Barry's here today. Oh, forget it. That's right. So we need to start with a little musica. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, we're coming in hot with the music. I hope everybody's doing well. Welcome to the Podcast Engineering Show. My name is Chris Curran. I produce podcasts for companies, and I also teach at Podcast Engineering School. On this show, we bring you podcast production techniques on a silver platter. We alternate between uh, interviews and uh, daily goodie episodes like this one. We're going to cover a bunch of the daily goodies, the little blog posts I write about three times a week. You can sign up to receive those uh, posts. Go to the website, podcastengineeringschool.com. You can sign up to receive your daily goodies. Like I said, three times a week. About It's just a little, like a helpful hint or a tip on podcast production. Really, really helpful. So real quick, the next semester of Podcast Engineering School actually starts on April 19th, 2022. April 19th, 2022. If you or someone you know wants to learn how to produce podcasts professionally, be able to go out and get a bunch of a handful of good clients that are going to pay you top dollar so you can work from home and produce their audio and make a great living working from home. Uh, yeah, that's what we teach at Podcast Engineering School. So first of all, this is going to be a great episode, not only because we're going to talk about a bunch of the daily goodies, a bunch of tips and tricks for podcast production, but right now I'm, I'm going to show you, first thing, I'm going to show you the three microphone emulations that I picked out for myself on my my new my newer microphone new ish it's a sphere l22 microphone and it's one of these microphones that is a large diaphragm condenser and they have software that allows you that emulates a bunch of different classic microphones like U67s, U47s, 251s, 414s. Like, at, so I have probably about 35 or 40 emulations to choose from. And I went through every single emulation and tested it with my own voice. And I narrowed it down to three microphones. And again, these are just software emulations. I'm using the same microphone. It's the L22. Uh, but what I came up with was three of them. So I wanted to demonstrate them for you now. So right now, you're actually hearing me on the 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 one that I chose as the ultimate winner, actually, which is the, it's an emulation of a 414, the nylon version though, which is an older version of a 414. And so you've been, that's what you've been hearing so far. And right now I want to switch to the next emulation so right now, I switched it. So right now, you're listening to me on a, a, a 251E emulation. So it's an emulation of, of a very famous microphone. So this is the 251. I also like this one. You know, and again, I think... See, the, here's the thing about choosing different microphones. In podcasting, it's not the biggest deal in the world to like hunt around and find the exact microphone that sounds best on your voice. I mean, no one really does that, right? Because we don't. None of us has the money to do that, to try a million microphones. But in music production, is where these types of emulation microphones really come in handy. Because not only uh, I don't know if I, I mentioned this before, but I'll just reiterate it: that with this L22 microphone, you can actually change the emulation after you record it. So in post-production, you can sit there and flip through a bunch of different microphones and then pick the one you like best in post. So it's amazing. But for music, it's a lot more handy because, you know, for music, there's, well, every there's so many more instruments and the vocal has to cut through the music, but it also has to sound good. So in music, it's even more difficult. But um, all right. So anyway, this was the 251. And now I'm going to switch to the next one. And this one is the OW12. So it's it's an emulation of a C12, and it's OW12 number two. I'll actually list in the, in the show notes. I'll list the three uh, the three that I liked a lot. 
So this is the OW12. So this is, yeah, it's an emulation of a C12, and I really like it. Uh, it was one of the top three that I chose, so I really do like it. Um, I don't know if it's better than the 414. I chose the 414 over this one. So let's go back to the 414. And okay, we are back now on the LD414 Nylon. So I, I like this one. I don't know. For Again, it, it's just, it depends on your voice, which which microphones are going to sound the best for you. It's It just depends on your voice because every voice is different and every mic is different. So it's like trying to find the perfect match. So anyway, all right. So this is the, we're going to leave it on this setting for the rest of the episode. This is, And this is the same same sound that we started the episode with. So let's get into these daily goodies. We're going to start with one from May 21st, 2021. Wow, we're that far back? We're like nine months behind? But I did take a few months off. Anyway, uh, so the title of this daily goodie is, Here's When I Don't Edit Out a Word Mispronounced Then Repeated Correctly. So a lot of times podcast participants will... They'll mispronounce a word. They'll be talking and they'll mispronounce a word. And then, you know, some people, they just immediately re-pronounce the word, but pronounce it properly. I don't know if re-pronounce is a word, but uh, it sounds sounds good. Anyway, I'm kidding. But so if someone just repeats the word and says it properly and then he just keeps talking, that's an easy edit to make, right? It's very usually pretty easy to, to edit that. Like if someone messes up, instead of saying Mississippi, they say Mississippi. Uh, oh, sorry, Mississippi. And and you see how I immediately corrected it to the correct pronunciation? If they do that, it's easy to edit out the mispronunciation. But here's when it's difficult. And I would, well, it's not impossible, but it's difficult and weird to edit out a mispronunciation when when people behave as they normally behave. This is what people do when they mispronounce a word. Mississippi. Oh, Mississippi. Oh, I mispronounced it. <laughs> Mississippi. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know why. Some. I mean, sometimes it is funny when people mispronounce words, but uh, it's just, it's to me, it seems like one of those nervous things that people do. Like, they kind of make a big deal out of it just to sort of try to gloss over it and try to laugh and get by it. But anyway, it doesn't matter why people do it. People do that. But here's the thing. It's almost impossible to edit that because when they come back in, when they come back in and pronounce the word correctly, they're still laughing. So it would be like Mississippi. Oh, Mrs. Oh, I mispronounced it. Mississippi. <laughs> and then they continue their sentence, right? So if you cut out the mispronunciation, this is what you're going to hear. Okay, so we were driving in our car and we drove over the Mississippi uh, and uh, it was it was a great trip. Like, you know what I mean? Like when you take out the mispronunciation, all of a sudden they just start laughing in the middle of a sentence and it makes no sense. And the lis every listener's going to perk up and say, what the heck was that? <laughs> so anyway, that's that's when I don't edit out a mispronunciation. All right, next daily goodie. Do you cheat? And publish your episodes louder than the unofficial loudness standard. I do. So yeah, there's an unoffic unofficial loudness standard in podcast production, which is minus 19 luffs for mono episodes and minus 16 luffs for stereo episodes. So those those are the the unofficial loudness standards. And so, you, I mean, you can basically publish your episodes at whatever volume you want, uh, but... Again, these loudness standards are for the listeners, right? We want to provide a good listening experience to the listeners. And if we all put our episodes out at the same volume, it makes it great for the listeners because then they just listen at the same volume and they can hear everything and it's great. But I actually cheat a bit and I put mine out at about 0 0.4 luffs louder than the unofficial standard. Why do I do that? Well, I know some people say they put it out louder because it sounds better, but that's that's really not why I do it because making it louder doesn't necessarily make it sound better. But I do it because I tend to use more compression than average on, on the episodes that I produce. I don't overdo compression, but I use a good amount because, again, when when you're providing a good listening experience to a listener, 
especially when they're in an environment with a lot of background noise, you have to use quite a bit of compression just to make sure they can hear every word. And if you do it right, it, it sounds great. You know, no one ever hears the compression. They just hear that it sounds great. So that's what I do. But when you use a bit of compression or even average or a bit more than average compression, what happens is your peaks don't peak as loud. And therefore, sometimes when I would put out my episode at like, let's say minus 16 stereo, I would sort of compare it to another show and the other show would sound a bit louder, but not always. Like when the, when the host started mumbling, it didn't it didn't sound louder. It sounded lower. So my episodes are more consistent, but at at certain points, these other episodes get louder because they're not produced professionally. So that's why I cheat a little bit. I just put mine out a little bit louder than the average. It doesn't hurt anybody. It's not a big deal. And again, because I'm producing the audio properly and I'm I'm not clipping and I'm not doing any, I'm I'm producing the audio professionally. It's easy to to do that, uh, to put it out a little bit louder and not have any, like I said, clipping or any deterioration of the audio quality. All right. Oh, I hear a plane overhead. Yeah, because we live near the Air Force Academy and, and they, uh, they what they do is they bring up, it must be new pilots, like when they're first getting trained, they sort of, they dra th there's a plane that drags like a glider and I guess it takes off and so... I could see it in the air. It's like a it's like a small plane like pulling a glider and then at some point they let go of the glider and then the glider just glides and I, so the the pilot who's learning is sitting in the glider and you know able to steer. I'm assuming this. I don't, I don't know any of this for sure. <laughs> I'm I guess I'm completely guessing but anyway, so new pilots can dr ride in a glider and steer it and maybe even land it without having to worry about an engine and all that stuff. So anyway, all right, back to the daily goodies. Well, the next one uh, is a question for you. Are you up for a new client challenge? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Barry is ready. Uh, clearly, you heard him. So I have a smaller course. It's called Getting New Clients at Higher Rates. And it's a really awesome course. It's about two, almost three hours of video lectures and, and a bunch of other stuff along with it. We also have our own Slack group where we do every month we have these new client challenges if you wanted to take take part in that. But anyway, the thing is, it's like, you know, would you love to sign up a new podcast production client within the next month? Or maybe you want two clients within the next month that are paying you double what you're already charging, right? Wouldn't that be great? Well, it's possible. You can do it. I've done it. A lot of us have done it. <laughs> it's possible. You know, when we produce podcasts, this is... This is in, in 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 many ways it's important work, and uh, and people, especially companies who have marketing budgets, they don't mind hiring professionals. They don't mind spending real money. So if, anyway, that was the daily goodie. Details are on the website if you ever want to find out about that smaller course. Next daily goodie, perception of space. Yeah, so perception of space is really interesting again this is one this is another one that's more applicable to music because when 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 producing music you know engineers are sort of trying to create like a 3d experience for the listeners right you know you have your left and right stereo spectrum so you can pan things pan pan one guitar left and the other guitar right and now all of a sudden the guitar sounds really wide and big whatever and um and also adding reverb and and short delays and stuff, you can basically place instruments in different distances within the mix. Like if you put some, if you put a lot of reverb on a snare drum, it might sound like the snare drum is like 20 feet away from you. Whereas the person singing the vocals might sound like right up close to you. Right. So it's like a 3d, it's a 3d sort of a stereo spectrum that you're building. And again, mostly with music. Uh, however, and, and because what you're doing is you're creating a perception of space for the listener, right? It's a more, it's a more uh, all-encompassing experience, right? To have things on the left and right, front and back, at different frequencies, right? It, you can really make a mix uh, be very interesting. Anyhow, what does this have to do with podcast production? Well, there are some of these tricks you can use in podcast production if you wanted to. You can cre you can use music, you can use sound effects like that. Uh, there are other perception tricks uh, where 
you know, one of them is that, let's say you have a host and a guest, uh, you can you can pan each one slightly to the side. So you pan the host like, you know, 3% to the left and the guest, you, you pan them 3% to the right. And you know, if it's a, if you're producing a stereo episode, and if you do that, it's unbelievable the kind of separation that you get between those two voices. Meaning, if those two people talk over each other at the same time, it's a lot easier to understand each one if they're panned slightly off from each other. It's it's you have to you have to try it for yourself and experience it to understand what I'm talking about. But it's such a cool little perception trick for podcast production. Anyway, there's there's a lot of tricks. Let's go on to the next daily goodie, which is the Sennheiser MKH416 microphone. Yeah, this is a short shotgun microphone. It normally goes for about $1,000, but this microphone is such high quality. It's used on, I mean, so many movie sets. It's, it's a very, I mean, it's a world-renowned microphone, the, the 416. It's really awesome. It's a, it's a tube microphone. It's a shotgun. And I used to have, um, well, I still have it. It's an Audio-Technica 8035, which is also a short shotgun. Same, same form factor as the 416. But when I put them side by side, the 416 versus the 8035, Oh my God, the 416 was like, it sounded so much better. Again, it's hard to describe. It, it, and, and, and the 8035 sounded good. <laughs> but the 416 just, I don't know, it's like on another level. I think a lot of people use this microphone for uh, voiceovers as well. I mean, this is really, and the only reason I bought one is because it was on sale for like 800 bucks like a couple years ago. Anyway, I like it. I've actually been using it for my YouTube videos. So if you go to the YouTube channel, well, you can go to the YouTube channel, but you're, so here's the thing. You're not going to see the mic because I keep the mic out of the camera, but it is right in front of me pointing right at my mouth. Uh, it's it's just below the, the where the camera is. So yeah, so I've been using it. So if you want to hear it, you can you can go watch some of the YouTube videos. Go to it's 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 the podcast engineering school channel on YouTube. But yeah, it's great. It's um above the two kilohertz. It's a low bar pattern, so it's very directional, like very directional. And uh, anyway, that's why actually that's one of the reasons why when I use it right in front of my big computer screen, there's a weird like there's there's weird uh, there's weirdness happening with regards to frequencies because there's some standing wave in this room or the because of the low bar pattern it's picking up a lot from the back or something uh which it it does in the pattern you can see that but um anyway i had to notch out like i think it was around 150 hertz i had to notch out some there to sort of clean up clean up the sound so it didn't sound like it, it wasn't quite muddy it was more like a little muddy and phasey put together. So something weird was happening, but that's because I have the, the 416 microphone just sitting right in front of my computer monitor, which is not the best placement for that mic. You know, it works better in big open spaces and stuff like that. Or especially, at least if it's not three inches from a wall or something like that, you know, cause right now it's about three inches from my computer monitor. All right. That's the 416 really awesome mic. I love it. I wish I could use it more. That's sort of why I'm using it for my videos because I'm like, you know what? I own this mic. I better use it. But it really is nice. Okay, next daily goodie. And how are we doing with daily goodies? We getting toward the bottom here? Oh, we got three more to go. So this daily goodie is the SSL UC1 hardware plugin controller. So this is a controller. This is a hardware plugin controller. So it's a physical unit. And uh, oh, I forgot to mention... In the description or in the show notes of this episode, I link to every single daily goodie I'm talking about. So for instance, for this one, just go click on the link for the SSL UC1 hardware plugin controller and you'll go to the page and you'll actually be able to see a picture of it. So so if you want to see pictures and stuff, then just click through the links in the show notes. So yeah, it's, so literally it's a little piece of hardware, not that little, maybe the size of an average, a little bit bigger than the size of an average book or something maybe. And so it has like, you know, the SSL EQ knobs on it, has the SSL master bus compressor 
on it with all the knobs. So basically this plug-in controller will when you turn the knob on the controller, the knob in the in your DAW uh, in the plugin will move. So this they made this because a lot of people, especially older audio engineers like me, we like to twist knobs, like physical um we like to touch the EQ and, and, and compressor controls like it, because that's how we always did it, right? We never did it in the computer usually. So it's, it's just a different experience when you can, you can use an EQ with physical knobs. It's just, it's, it's just, it's a different experience. I don't know how to explain why it's different, but it just, you feel like you have more control over it or something. Now it's not necessary. Okay. It's not necessary that you, it, you can do everything in your computer in the box. You don't need any controllers like this. You don't need in quotes. Uh, but some of these controllers make things a lot easier. And this is, uh, this is actually made by SSL. And so anyway, there's a little more info in the blog post that goes a little deeper into it, but I don't have, I don't have one and I don't, I, I don't, I don't have any controllers, but I have a feeling within the next few years, I might have to get one because they're getting so good. They're getting really Really good. Okay, next daily goodie. Steinberg Wave Lab. All right, this is mastering software. Steinberg Wave Lab. So this is mastering software. I've never tried it. Um, the full version costs about $480, and there's an Elements version available for $99, which which my previous guest, Jason Sheasley, uses. Uh, Jason Sheasley, what episode was he? Let me click and find out. So, but anyway, Steinberg Wave Lab, uh, it it's one of the, again, it's a similar to other mastering software where there's all kinds of different processors in it. There's compressors, EQs, there's probably saturation, there's probably a lot more than that. Stereo spectrum stuff, mid-side stuff, exciters. I mean, there's right, there's a lot that can go in there. All kinds of different compressors and EQs, I'm sure. So, I haven't tried it, but these types of mastering software are usually a good buy because like, for instance, in this case, 480 bucks, there's so many different processors in there that you can use and you don't just have to use it for mastering either, right? You could put this on every voice in your podcast episode if you wanted to. You don't have, it's, it's, it's just processing. It doesn't, just because it's called mastering software doesn't mean you have to use it for mastering. You could use it on, in, in your mix on each track. Yeah, Jason Sheasley was episode 188 of this show. That was a good one. Jason, really good guy, knows a lot. So let's move on to, I believe, the last one of the day. Yes, this is the last daily goodie of the day. And Oh, no, well, first, the next post on my website was Jason Gambrell. That's episode 219. I don't know if you heard episode 219, but 188 and 219 are amazing episodes. Jason Gambrell and and actually in the Jason Gambrell post there's another uh there's a TC electronic the Clarity M loudness meter that's a little piece of hardware he uses for to to check his loudness on things. Anyway, okay, so that's episode 219 if you want to hear me with Jason Gambrell. And now the last daily goodie is I held an ATR2100 USB in my hand this whole episode. All right, that's the name of the daily goodie. I'm not actually doing that now. I held an ATR2100 in my hand this whole episode. Well, it's the daily goodie is referring to an episode of The Mystic Show, which is another podcast that I host, actually. Uh, I don't, I mean, I've done like one episode of year for the last like three years. So I'm not very active on it, but I started it in 2014. And uh, yeah, it's all about spirituality and meditation and all deep stuff like that. But anyway, we had one of our uh, meditation sessions, the, the live stream sessions that we stream on YouTube and Twitch and stuff, uh, me and my wife. And after the meditation, because a lot of times what happens in meditation is you end up getting ideas or having certain thoughts like, and, and, and quite often there's solutions to problems. Like I can't tell you how many times I've meditated and like in the meditation itself, I get an answer to a problem at work th that I was experiencing like eight hours before, like 
maybe in the morning there's an issue w- with my business or something and like I just I don't know what to do I'm confused you know I need to think things through or consider different things and then just you know later that night in meditation when I'm not even trying to think of solutions or anything a solution will come that's that's literally one of the best parts of meditation is that you end up getting answers and solutions and ideas, good ideas. It's, yeah, it's all, it's similar to like taking a shower too, right? People have these kinds of thoughts in the shower, right? When they're just like relaxed and they just, thoughts come to them. Anyway, so we were met, we meditated on the live stream and I had some thoughts and I was like, you know what? I'm going to record an episode of my mystic show. So my wife left the room after the meditation and I just picked up the ATR 2100 and I just held it in my hand and I did, it was a short little 13 minute monologue. And, you know, I just held it in my hand because I didn't have a, a, a microphone stand anywhere nearby. But obviously one of the reasons I wrote this is to stress the fact that when you're holding a, a microphone in your hand and you're recording, uh, you have to be careful not to move the mic around in your hand too much because some microphones have quite a bit of handling noise. Like if if you even switch hands, you'll hear all this like little weird handling noise. So when I recorded this 13 minute thing, I was very careful to like just hold it and not move it the whole time. And that again, that really helps because again, it's all about the end listener and the experience you're providing to the the end listener. And if they have to hear this weird microphone sound the whole time, it's just annoying. It's just as it's just as annoying as people like tapping on their desk the whole time while they're recording a podcast episode. It's just annoying. So you don't you don't want that. So all right, well that was the last daily goodie we're going to cover today. I do want to say that I appreciate you for listening. I know over the past, I don't know, 6 to 9 months, I've been I haven't been putting out an episode every other week religiously. I've skipped weeks and yeah, it happens. It's I don't know, it's just you know, there's phases, there's seasons. I don't mean seasons like podcast seasons. I just mean like seasons of your life, stuff like that. That's all it is. But I'm going to, I want to do more interviews soon. Uh, if you know anybody who wants to be interviewed or, or if you know anyone that I would appreciate interviewing on my show, feel free to suggest people. And, uh, and also the, the getting new clients at higher rates course that I mentioned earlier. Check that out on the website. Everything's on the website. All right, that's it. I'm done. Barry. Are you done? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. He's done. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. We'll see you soon. Don't forget the YouTube channel, Podcast Engineering School. I've been putting up about one video a week for the past like two, three weeks, I think. So check them out. All right. See you guys. Bye. <laughs>